Good evening. Welcome to St. Mark the Evangelist Catholic Church. We thank you for worshiping with us today. Just a reminder that all people have a right to receive Holy Communion as they desire, whether on the tongue or on their hand. At this time, out of an abundance of caution, the bishop's latest decree reminds us that those receiving Holy Communion are strongly encouraged to receive the Eucharist on the hand, and individuals should remove their face coverings and gloves before approaching to receive communion. We also recommend that if you would like to receive the Eucharist on the tongue, please consider waiting toward the end of communion so as to allow those who wish to receive on the hand to go first. We will not be passing a collection basket in order to avoid cross-contamination, but we have placed collection boxes for your donation at all the entrances. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. St. Mark has a new youth ministry director, and his name is Bradford Downs. He recently graduated from the University of Dallas with his master's in pastoral ministry and is eager to serve the church. We're starting a new high school ministry program called Above the Waves, which will begin on Wednesday, September 9th at 6.30 p.m. on the field behind the school. All high school youth are invited to come for food and games. Adults, we are in need of volunteers to help provide food and a core team for the youth to lead small groups. There are two posters in the back of the church, one for youth registration information and the other, the other for adult volunteer information. If you need additional info, have any questions, Bradford's contact information is located on both posters. Thank you.
please rise and join in our celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you raise us Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people, people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you.
Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day, I will summon my servant Eliakim, son of Hilkiah. I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem into the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one will open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went into the region of Caesarea Philippi, and he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah. Still other Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the nether world shall not prevail against it. I will give you the key to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you buy on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. For us Catholics, this gospel passage we just heard is one of the most familiar extracts in the entire New Testament. No matter how often we hear it, picture after picture, image after image comes into our minds. We know the basics about the Pope and what he is the successor of St. Peter, the vicar of Christ, the pastor of the entire church, the one who has full, supreme, and universal authority over the entire church, 
So my purpose here is not to review those things we already know, but instead to present a, a series of, frankly, loosely connected musings of the lesser th known things about the papacy. The one thing, first of all, we should, can re should remember is when an election takes place, the cardinals really don't get together to elect a pope. Instead, they elect the Bishop of Rome. And in virtue of that election, he automatically becomes the pope. He automatically becomes the pastor of the entire church. He succeeds St. Peter, who was martyred in Rome. Another thought. The papal election, as we have it today, started taking shape in the 11th and 12th centuries. And from the year 1179 onwards, the Pope was elected exclusively by the Cardinals. Now, that being said, through the centuries, certain Catholic kings and monarchs did have a veto power. The last time that veto power was exercised was in 1903. In that year, the Austrian emperor vetoed a candidate who was not to his liking, a candidate who looked like he would be elected the pope. So instead, the cardinals elected Cardinal Giuseppe uh, Sarto, the Archbishop of Venice, as Pope Pius X. The following year, in 1904, Pope Pius X eliminated the veto power from the papal elections. So you could say that Emperor Franz Joseph of Austria shot himself in the foot. Another thought, when elected, the cardinal who is chosen as pope changes from the red garments to the familiar papal white. But it wasn't always so. In an earlier era, the pope retained his reds, but instead switched to a richer material and more elegant trim. Then, in the year 1566, Pope Pius V was elected. He was a Dominican. He was very much devoted to his religious order, very much devoted to the white habit the Dominicans wear to this day. So, even as Pope, he retained his Dominican white, and the popes have kept it that way right up to the present day. This is especially significant when you think about Pope Francis. Pope Francis is a Jesuit, but he did not revert back to the black habit of the Jesuit order. Even he kept the Dominican whites. Now through time, the chair of Peter was held by some very competent men, many of them quite competent. Just some examples, St. John Paul II, St. John XXIII, 
St. Pius X, St. Leo the Great, St. Gregory the Great. The list could go on. But even among those popes who were not canonized yet, there were a number of extremely competent men. Alexander III, Innocent III, Gregory the Ninth, Martin V, Leo the Thirteenth. That list could go on as well. So we might be asking, were some of the were some of the popes incompetent? To say that some of the popes were incompetent would be an understatement. Some of them were genuine lowlifes. To use a modern expression, some of our popes were a real piece of work. Stephen VI, Sergius III, John XII, Benedict IX, Alexander VI. But even these men make a fa fascinating historical study. I present all these brief and random musings to get your curiosity going and increase your appetite for more. The history of the papacy is a fascinating study within the general history of the church. Let's learn more. The more we learn, the more we will be fascinated and the more we will love our church. Once again, since most of us know the Apostles' Creed by heart a lot better than the Nicene Creed, we will take that option today and recite the, the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Relying on God's unfailing promise, we pray for the church and the world. The church leaders and faithful believers practice charity and patience with one another. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That temporal rulers and civil leaders resist temptation and root out corruption. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who know the gifts of friendship and marriage remain constant in love through every child, and when death has separated them, may take comfort in the hope of the resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For an abundant vocation to the priesthood and religious life in our diocese, and for our own St. Mark Seminarians, Peter Whitfield and Parker Thompson, 
that they may grow in their love for Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Let us pray to the Lord. For our faithful departed ones, that God may have pity on them and bless them, and let his faith set its light upon them in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Eternal God, all power is yours to grant. Hear the prayers of your servants and grant what we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so, with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, Gregory, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, 
my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. you to meditate on this prayer for spiritual communion by St. Alphonsus Liguori. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord in your life. In your life. Saint Michael. Defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. 